of food sitting out in the, the back lot for an hour at a time. You need to put it straight away into the storage area where it belongs. Okay? You need to store things off the ground. You need to keep your food at least six inches off the ground. Okay? It may be more in your particular area depending on food safety legislation. But at least six inches off the ground. Why do you do this? Well, if the fridge or the storeroom gets flooded, then your food doesn't get destroyed because it's six inches off the ground. Most floods aren't going to be six inches in a fridge. It also protects the food against vermin. If you get infestation, if you get rats or mice, six inches off the ground, you know, it makes it that bit harder. Okay, so store off the ground. First in, first out system, the FIFO system. What does this mean? This means that the first thing that's gone into your store should be the first thing that's issued out when the kitchen needs it or the bar needs it. So, let's say you've got three boxes of cherries in the dry store and you receive three boxes more, okay? Before you put the new boxes in there, you take the old three that are there, you move them to the front of the shelf and you put the three new ones behind it. So the oldest stock is getting used first. Why do we do this? Very simple. Expiration dates. We don't want stock expiring we don't want stock spoiling unnecessarily we want to keep the stock rotating if you don't rotate your stock you could have stock at the back of all your shelves and your fridges your freezers that's just gone off that has to be written off and that's cash it's bottom line it's gone it can never be used one of the places where I see this most often is in the big chest freezers if you've got a big chest freezer it's impossible to operate the first in first out system things get thrown on top in the middle of service chefs are grabbing bags of peas or um, Dover soles, or fish fillets, or whatever they're grabbing, and everything gets thrown back into the, the chest freezer again. I've done inventories in kitchens where it's taken me an hour to take everything out of the freezer to count it correctly. And you know your chef isn't doing that when he's receiving goods. So I would stay away from chest freezers if space and your budget allows it. Okay, step number five is cooking and handling. In my experience, this is where you're going to experience the most loss in the food cost control cycle. Why? Well, You've got more human involvement, you've got a lot more variables in terms of overcooking or spoiling or, you know, finding something's gone off and then throw it away. At the, at the preparation stage and at the cooking stage, you've got a lot, of, a lot of variables right there. So what can you do to reduce the variables at the stage of the food cost control cycle? Well, first of all, you need to ensure that every member of the food cost or the food preparation staff is trained in how you want the food prepared. You need to prepare a kitchen bible, okay? And what's a kitchen bible? Well, it's, it's gonna be a very hard back binder that's gonna sit in the kitchen forever. It's gonna get dirty with gravy and sauces. And everything's gonna get splashed in it, but that's okay because it means it's out there and it's getting used. And what's inside it? Inside it is a recipe card for every single item on your menu. Not only is there a recipe card, but there's a photograph of how that item should look when you're presenting it to the server for service to the customer. Okay, that's all about consistency. So what's on a recipe card? Well, a recipe card lists in detail the exact ingredients you need for that dish. It lists everything from the salt and pepper right up to the big brand or the big ticket items like your steaks and your, your fish and your deer or your venison, whatever it is you're serving. Every single item, every ingredient is listed on the recipe card. Next, is listed the instructions, the cooking instructions, how do you prepare this, okay? You also put down there, you also attach there your photograph, a photograph of that dish before it's presented. What some restaurants also do, which is an excellent idea, is on that recipe card, they put down the total cost of the ingredients. They put down the sales price of that product and they show the profit margin, okay? They're not afraid to show the line cooks and everybody else in the kitchen the profit margin that's being made in that product. Why? Because it shows the kitchen that very often there's not that much of a margin on some of the products and any bit of a loss or wastage is going to seriously impact the bottom line and you know the margin of that particular item. So you should of course be calculating the profit margins of every item yourself with your own set of recipe cards and food cost calculators. You'll find all these calculators, all these documents, all these templates by the way on managerbar.com. Log on, um, download them all, they're in Microsoft Word and Excel format and you can use them in your kitchen straight away. Okay, so cooking and handling is step number five of the process. Um, one thing we've come across quite a lot in kitchens is that you get cooks who maybe aren't the most proficient or haven't been trained up to the level that's really needed of them and there's a lot of wastage. 
they over prepare, they under prepare, they, they cut too much off the end of a fillet, they, they spoil a lot of food. And what happens to that food? Do they come to you in the manager's office and say, boss, I've spoiled $50 worth of food, I'm really sorry about that. No, what do they do? It goes into the garbage bags. And there's so many garbage bags in the kitchen, you're never gonna spot it, right? Well, here's what you do. You put in place clear garbage bags. Every station has a clear garbage bag. And you can at any time walk through the kitchen and look through the garbage bags. You're gonna see it as you're walking past. Why is there a side of beef in the garbage bin? Why is there a, a whole melon in there? Why are we wasting all this? Why are we not reusing the tips of the, the beef fillet for making into mince for burgers? You know, it allows you to ask the questions. That was the chef to see. I've worked in some kitchens where the chef has no garbage bags in the kitchen. Instead, he's got large buckets at each chef station. And any wastage has to be thrown into the bucket. And only the chef, only the head chef can throw away food out of these buckets. Okay, not a bad idea. Maybe something you can implement yourselves. Okay, step number six is service. Service, okay, you've got your servers in the bar or the restaurant. They're very busy, they're running around, they're taking drinks orders, they're taking food orders, they're putting their orders into the point of sale system. They come to the kitchen saying, emergency, I need this item now, I forgot to order it. First step when dealing with the service staff. Only items that have come through the point of sale system, through your kitchen printer or on a docket. Only items on a docket with the server's name on it will ever leave the kitchen. Why is this? Well, it's for accountability. It's so that you can track every item that leaves the kitchen. If a server is able to come up to the service window or the pass and say, chef, sorry, I forgot about that extra steak. Can I get an emergency rare steak? And you send it out without a docket. What's to say that's not going to a friend of the server's? What's to say that's not going to the server themselves? Okay? You need to keep a track of everything that leaves the kitchen. So every docket that comes in, every slip that gets printed off the kitchen printer is kept in one box in the kitchen. At the end of the night, it's the job of the head chef or the sous chef to take all those out of the box and add them up, okay? He's got one basic spreadsheet. You'll find this at managerbar.com too. He's got a spreadsheet where he's got all his menu items on the left-hand side. And he's got all his dockets on the side, of, out, out in the box. And as he's taking each docket out of the box, he's marking off one steak, one burger, two fish, and adding it up. By the end of the night, the total on the chef's sheet must equal the total that has gone through the point of sale system in the front of house. That's probably one of the last things you do in the day after service is finished, is comparing what's left the kitchen to what's been charged for front of house. And any, any discrepancy, any disparity between the two figures needs to be investigated there and then. Okay? So service, most important, only issue with a docket. Step number seven, and the final step in the food cost control cycle, before you repeat everything again, of course, is receiving payment. And I touched on that with regards to the service. So if the payment in the point of sale system is not equaling what you've served out of the kitchen, then you've got a problem and needs to be investigated. Now, if you've got a big menu, or you're serving 50, 60 different items, you're not going to be able to you know, to work out every item every night, especially if it's you know, if some of your chicken breast is diced up or it strips into tacos or whatever it is, you know, you're not going to be able to calculate everything precisely. But what you should do is take five or ten items a day and analyse those five or ten items. It could be your beef tenderloin. It could be your chicken breast. It could be your duck breast. And what you're going to want to know as a business owner is does the total number of duck breasts that left the shelf in the fridge equal the total number of duck breasts that I got paid for in the point of sale system? You know, a lot of business owners don't do this. And this is where you can get an advantage over your competitor. There's not very many businesses doing this. Those that do are surviving. They're surviving the tough times and they're surviving it okay because they're able to control their costs, okay? They are the seven steps of the food cost control cycle. Forecasting, ordering, receiving, storing, cooking and handling, service, and receiving payment. Don't be afraid of the kitchen. Don't let the chef tell you, it's okay boss, everything's okay in my kitchen, everything's under control. Everything's only under control in the kitchen when you as a business owner can verify that it's under control. Don't be afraid of it. So don't forget, if you need any forms or checklists like mentioned in today's talk, go to managerbar.com, log on and download the forms you need for your business. So um, for today, I'm Barry Chandler from managerbar.com. Thank you very much.